Hello, I'm Craig Easton at Tradewinds, and this is the Green Seas Podcast. It's a weekly look into some of the sustainability issues hitting the shipping industry. And in this episode, we're going to focus on the huge costs that experts say that ship owners are going to face once the latest European emissions regulations kick in for shipping at the start of next year. With penalties of about 58.5 euros per gigajoule of non-compliant energy use, it could cost shipping millions of dollars. And it's like a game of poker, but where the choice is with your deck at a bank, borrow, pool or pay. This week's episode is brought to you with the support of Bureau Veritas. For more information, visit their website, group.bureauveritas.com. At Bureau Veritas, each and every one of us is by your side to help you navigate your decarbonisation journey and shape a better maritime world. So in January next year, the fuel EU maritime regulations come into force and join the European Emissions Trading Scheme as two parts of a set of rules forcing ship owners to cut fossil fuel use. Like the ETS, the fuel EU maritime regulations go easy at first, for five years in fact, but even this start, an easy start, could be costly. So in this episode of Green Seas, I'm going to break it down a bit for you and with the help of an expert explain what's going on what options there are, and most importantly, why some ship owners will be picking up penalties. The Fuel EU maritime rules were written in Brussels to ensure shipping turned to cleaner fuels. Rather than be prescriptive, the rules say that the voyages covered within the regulations, that's intra-voyages and half the voyages in and out of the block, need to have less energy intensity than the benchmark year, which is 2020. Now, the rules are written so that there are financial penalties which will generate revenue for Brussels to spend, hopefully on maritime decarbonisation projects. The basic is that for a vessel year, you will do a calculation of uh, how you are meeting the criteria in the fuel EU maritime regulation. And the carbon intensity per megajoule is set to 89.34, and depending on then how much. Uh, energy you have used on the voyages within European regulation, then you calculate your compliance balance, which then might be positive or negative. So if you have a deficit, there will be a deficit in uh, CO2 equivalents, and you need to calculate those CO2 equivalents back to tons of uh, very low sulfur fuel oil, and the penalty is then 2,400 uh, per ton fuel equivalent. That's Helge Hermans Gord from DNV. So what he's saying there is that for all ships over 5,000 gross tons going to, from and between EU ports from 2025, they need to measure their energy use. And for each megajoule of energy used, there's a corresponding carbon intensity for that energy, which depends on the fuel used and any other measures that are applied, such as wind propulsion and shore power. Now, the fuel EU maritime also comes with a benchmark value. That's what will make the carbon intensity per megajoule for the vessel either in surplus or in deficit. And if you're in deficit, there's action that you can take, a penalty to then pay, before the vessel earns a certificate of compliance. But before you basically go into being... uh in a position where you are paying for that, you have to evaluate what kind of compliance options do you apply in order to get there, and penalty is just one of them. But you can also, if you, let's say, have five vessels, one with a surplus compliance and four with a deficit compliance, you can pool them together so that the average for those five vessels in that pool uh, will meet the criteria. So pooling is also a a measure that can be used. If you're doing that and meeting the criteria, there will be no penalty. So that's one way to be compliant. Herman Gord pointed to a second option. There's another <laughs> compliance measure called borrowing. So if you, let's say, you're not meeting the requirement this year, or let's say we are in 2025, you're not meeting the requirement and you have a deficit. With a small deficit, you can borrow from next year. So borrow from 2026, but let's say you borrowed 
100 tons, then you get a penalty of 10%. So you start with the minus 110. So there you actually have the interest <laughs> in a way. So you can borrow, but that comes to an additional cost. So the third option is for owners to pay the annual deficit compliance penalty. Now, remember how Hermann's Gord said it was 2,500 euros per tonne equivalent of low sulphur fuel. Well, that's going to add up. Even if the opening reduction in carbon dioxide intensity per megajoule of energy used on ships is only a 2% reduction in those first five years. Tradewinds recently spoke to OceanScore, a German software house, which said the industry could be facing a $1.46 billion annual penalty demand, with container ships being notably hit as they're forced to pay deficits because, quite simply, there are not enough compliant vessels with which to pool with. Here's Hermann Gord again from DNV. We did an analysis looking at the 2022 data, and if you look at the data, there is uh, seven to eight times more deficit than there is surplus. Uh, so unless uh, there will be uh, a significant uptake of uh, lower carbon fuels, there will be quite a few uh, companies doing um, the penalty uh, option or be forced to do it in a way. Uh, but I think it's also interesting to see because now quite a few companies out are evaluating how they can burn more, for example, biofuel in order to become compliant. Now, what this means is that those vessels which have a surplus at the end of 2025 will be the rarity. And therefore, there's a demand for them to join pools and to share their surplus with vessels that are in deficit. And this is where a new commercial market could emerge. Uh, it will be very interesting to see, uh, but if you have a surplus compliance, it's actually having a value and how that will be treated be between the different companies will be interesting to see. Because if you go back to the options, if you have a surplus, you can also do banking. But let's say you are an LNG vessel with a, with a good surplus on the, on the slow speed diesel engines, uh, you will be compliant until the end of the 30s. So if you bank something that you're not getting an interest of, it's a pretty stupid idea financially. You are better off selling it than monetize it. Uh, so there will be trade on surplus compliance for sure. So could we see a market emerge where ship operators with vessels in surplus when the data is verified, thus the cleaner vessels can be paid to join a pool, even a pool of just one or two vessels or a larger pool of non-compliant vessels. It, it's a market that is merging for sure, uh, but uh, everything it, it has a value and somebody has a need. There's no credible price reference on this one yet. How it will be traded, uh, there are agreements currently between uh, owners to do pooling, private agreement established or intention of. It will be very interesting to see if there will be marketplaces, but that will I think we will see something within that field uh, within uh, the beginning of next year. Hermans Gord also said that the responsible entity for a vessel under their fuel EU maritime does not actually need to make a decision about pooling vessels right now. They can do that after 2025, but they need to do it before the data reporting deadlines. But he advises against that. Additionally, all vessels which are known to be operating in Europe and be under the FIUL EU maritime will need their monitoring plans prepared and submitted, and that has to be done by the end of August this year. That's in a few weeks' time. So that's another headache, I've been told. And this monitoring plan is different from the monitoring plans that the very same ship owners will have already prepared for the European Emissions Trading Scheme. So that's it for this quick episode of the Green Seas podcast. Just a quick ending to remind you to check out our weekly news podcast. That's Tradewind's Wavelength podcast, where we tap into the editorial firepower we have in our newsroom to bring you insights and updates from around the industry. Both podcasts, that's the Green Seas and the Wavelength podcast, are available on most podcast platforms, so you can subscribe or follow to make sure you get the latest news and insights into your ears. Until the next time, my name's Craig Eason. Goodbye.